And joining us today, great pleasure to welcome on our WTMY Artist Spotlight today, one of the best singers in the business. She has a brand new CD out, and uh, she joined us by telephone today. It's called They Wrote the Songs, and she makes a return visit uh, to the program. Great to welcome back uh, Julie Budd today from up in New York. And uh, uh, Julie, great to have a chance to talk with you again. I know it's been a few years, but uh, we won't make it uh, we won't get as long in the future anymore. We'll do this more frequently. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. You're a favorite of mine. Thanks for inviting me back. How long how have you been since we talked? I know you've been very busy with, with this CD, but you do a lot of shows and, and traveling, so you're keeping busy. Yeah. I really have been, and it's really busier now than ever. You know, I have a new website, and on the website you could, you know, see all the things I've been doing and that I'm going to be doing, and uh, I'm just very, very busy, and now the CD just makes me even more busy. (laughs) Every time I think I'm going to take it easy, right? (laughs) (laughs) I saw the new website. Great job with that. and. and, Thank and uh, you. I know that's an important part of uh, anybody's business, particularly if you're in uh, in show business. You really need to keep uh, keep well, that out there. Well, you know what's exciting about that website? It's so interactive because you know you go in and and it has all the audio visual right up front, and then it right. has the areas where you could talk to me and you know tell me what you think of all the music, and then there's that whole area where you could go through all the recordings. And then, you know, there's the bio area. What's interesting about that whole thing with the bio is that we attached it to the to the uh, little movie that we made about my career, you know, growing up and working with Frank Sinatra and all these people, you know, so and Liberace. So it was kind of interesting that the <laughs> written bio sort of went with all that video, you know. And again, for those folks that weren't with us last time, we're going to talk about the CD in a few minutes, but let's kind of review again uh uh, about your career a little bit, Julie. I remember watching you back in the, on the Merv Griffin show. You started out on that show. Ed Sullivan, you were on as as a as a kid. Yeah. Uh, but I was a little girl. girl. I mean, you, the audience needs to know. I mean, I was 12 years old when I started. Right. You know, and so you know, I mean, I was working as a child, um, and it was really exciting because. It, it 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 gave me sort of another uh, vantage point in 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 this uh, industry as opposed to a lot of people you know who are in their you know 40s and 50s you know who are my contemporaries and in the industry today who are working I have kind of a different slant on everything because of being a child working with these people it's sort of you know it, it gives you a different style of working it makes you look at things differently and different kind of training, different kind of history, you know. It's very different. You're working with uh, people like you mentioned, Frank Sinatra, Liberace. I know you worked, uh, I think, with George Burns, didn't you, at one time? And, uh, and yeah, I worked with George. I worked, yeah, I worked with George. I worked with Bob Hope. Bob um, Hope, yeah. I worked, yeah, I worked with uh, Liberace, Milton Berle. Um, gosh, you name the people, Johnny Carson, Merv Griffin, Carol Burnett, Jim Neighbors. Um, I worked with everybody, and, you know, they were really, really wonderful to me. I worked with Jimmy Durante when I was 17. Do you believe that? Wow. I love Jimmy Durante. Yeah. He, was great. <laughs> <laughs> he, was a, he was a great performer, and he really, you know, he understood his audience, and and he was a great master of the stage. Um, I, I was just, you know, I was just very fortunate. I came along at the right time, worked with the right people, and I got to break away at the right time to do my own thing. You know, it was almost like they were my teachers, and then they let me go, and I went out there and did it on my own. I think what was so great about those performers, uh, all of them, or at least most of them, came out of really vaudeville, where you really had to learn your craft, uh, yep. different cities, and breaking an act in and all that. You, you really learned Absolutely. how to do an act. Yeah. Absolutely right. You're absolutely 100% right. And I kind of got the best of both worlds because I learned that whole vaudevillian mentality from them. And then I went off and, and I went to study privately as well. So, And then, of course, you know, I was up on my feet since I was 12 years old, you know, <laughs> learning the practicalities of how to do this every day. But I was, I was really lucky. I, I, I sort of... I sort of got that schooling from a lot of different angles. And, you know, Doug, it really does change you. It, it, it does change you as a performer. Now you, it gives I you mean, great versatility. Yeah. 
Well, you, you started, like you said, so young, but uh, you hear a lot of stories about you know, children in show business, but uh, it doesn't seem like you had any of those issues uh, where you hear about it. You, you, you turned out pretty good <laughs> You know, as an adult. God, God blessed me. He really did. And not only because he, he gave me something that I could take in my life and really love and, and do, but he gave me the most wonderful parents. I had, Doug, I had the most wonderful parents. And I I couldn't ask for anything more. If I never would have gone into show business, Doug, if I never would have done any of this, believe me, I would have missed a lot because it, it's been an enormous, you know, it's been just, you know, a gift, you know. Sure. But my parents, my parents, Doug, I had the best parents in the world. I wouldn't have given that up for anything. And, and they gave me a great life. And I And I think it's just, you know, the kind of people they were, they just taught me how to cope with life, you know. No. Never to yeah. let any of this get to be, you know, just too much, you know? I think that, that, that comes across. I, we know each other a little bit just from talking a few times, but family is important. Your parents uh, kept you grounded at, at a time, and that's pretty heady stuff to be on you know, national TV, but it, it never really went to your head. I think that's that's the key to that. You, you, remained, uh, you remained as normal as you could, right? Well, you know, my parents, they always gave me the feeling like, Go take your shot. You have to work hard. Um, we expect you to, you know, step up to the plate. Don't waste anybody's time, you know. You're a <laughs> professional now. Even though you're young, you have a lot of responsibilities. You have to finish school. But they gave me a sense of security. I could always go home. You know what I mean? Right. If, sure. if, if, if I just felt I couldn't do it anymore or it became too much or whatever it was, my, they always gave me the feeling... Don't worry. You could always come home. You have a home. And, you know, that's a big thing for kids in this business. A lot of these kids, they don't have that. And I think they crack up from the pressure. Yeah. yeah they become the breadwinner, and uh, they feel they have to earn the money for the family, and, and that, that adds that extra pressure. They're not able to handle it at that age. It's a tough thing to deal with. I had, I had, I had, had, You know, I had sort of two worlds. I had the world where... I was in show business and on TV, and people knew who I was at a very young age. And then I had this other world. You know, I lived in Brooklyn, and I had my sisters, and I had my family, and I had my school. I was kind of living this dual life, and it mm. really it was it was the best thing my parents could have done for me. Yeah. It really, and 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 even today, you know, I'm I'm an active person in the industry. I'm still a young person. I'm out there training every day. I train my voice every day. You know, I'm a disciplined person. I I enjoy my work, and and uh, it's allowed me to enjoy it uh, on a whole other level. I've 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 loved doing this CD. This was um this was a labor a labor of love. You know, I I did um pieces from from writers that I really really believed were the writers of our generation. You know, from the 60s on, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, into the millennium. And and the writers that I always paid homage to were, were, were you know, Gershwin, Hammerstein, Foot, you know, the older writers. But I thought it was time, after I did the new classics, I thought it was time to keep looking at what our generation, you know, and even some people that were a little bit before our generation, you know, like, I do that whole medley with Anthony Newley and, and his his songs and Leslie Brickus, um, things like that. I I covered one of Frank's songs, "Let Me Try Again," you know, right. because I've never I I never heard a woman sing "Let Me Try Again." I don't know, you know, you know more about I haven't either. You're than right. I do. Yeah, that's right. Usually, I, I never heard it. Did you? No, usually I like Frank's version, and I've never heard uh, yeah, a, a woman sing that. That's a different take on it. Yeah, it's great, great, great yeah. addition. Yeah. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me to hear you say that. And then, you know, to take the Beatles song, Love Me Do, and do it kind of a jazzy fever idea, you know. That was great. Uh, that was a, a, a nice, uh, different, uh, alternate kind of arrangement of that, which which uh, really makes it come alive. I, I enjoyed that one. Yeah. I'm dying Love for Paul too. McCartney to hear that. I'm dying yeah. for him to hear it. Yeah, I really am, because I don't think that song's been treated like that ever, ever. That's no. another. Uh, um, that's another instance of I never heard a woman sing "Love Me Do." Did you? 
I haven't either, yeah. I, I know Paul McCartney put out a, a CD a year or so ago of doing standards, which is kind of a departure for him, so I'm sure he'd, be, he'd love to hear yeah. this version of yours. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm dying for him to hear it. And, you know, just um, having Ann Hampton Calloway's song on the CD, perfect, and having Steve Dorff, you know, he's such a wonderful writer, wrote all those wonderful things for Kenny Rogers, and to have one of his songs on the CD and, uh, you know, have that wonderful song from The Wiz, Home, you know, that Charlie yep. Small wrote. But I love the Anthony Newley, Leslie Brickus material. It's eight, uh, eight minutes eight minutes long, a little bit over eight minutes long. It's a really, really big, solid piece of work, you know. Hey, Anthony Newley, and, and when you, people kind of remember him more for his, you know, kind of unusual singing style and on the talk shows yeah. and all that. But he really wrote, along with Leslie Brickus, uh, some real standards uh, in the 60s, which uh, was a tough time yes. just to write standards. But he wrote some great ones, and you do four of them here. Who can I turn to? What kind of fool am I? Once in a lifetime, and If I Ruled the World. That, that's a great medley. Well, If I Ruled the World, I, and I have a little sticker on the CD that I gave you. If I Ruled the World is a departure from uh, from the Anthony Newley catalog. That was written by Cyril Ordnell. And he wrote okay. that with him. He wrote that with him uh, for Pickwick, actually. Uh, that was Leslie Brickus and Cyril Ordinell. Right. And, and uh, Tony didn't write it. And so many people think that he did, and I talk about that in the show. But the, the, the medley was really uh, devised to show you the gifts, how they, how they could be so extraordinary together, and how they could also be extraordinary independently with other writers. Right. And that's why I put If I Ruled the World the world in there, because I wanted people to also see Leslie Brickus separate from Anthony Newley as well. Sure. Yeah, I guess what, Stop the World I Want to Get Off? Uh, what is it, Roar the Grease? Well, that was all Anthony. That uh, was all Anthony and right. Leslie. Let's that was all it. Tony yeah. and Le Yeah. Yeah, but when it got to Pickwick, um, if I ruled the world, he wrote that with Cyril. Okay. But um, that was Leslie Brickus, yeah. But um, the, the catalog that Anthony Newley wrote with Leslie Brickus was astounding. What kind of fool am I? And oh yeah. If I, um, and who can I turn to? Who can I turn to? And once in a lifetime and. Uh, you know, um, I think they wrote, What a Wonderful Day Like Today. Remember that song? Sure, yeah. They right. they wrote that. I think they wrote that together as well. I mean, uh, they just great, great, great. And like you said, it's really wise what you said. In the 60s, when things were taking a turn into all the, you know, the British invasion and the whole thing, for them to have had the kind of legitimate success that they had together was extraordinary for the time. They may have been, along with Candor and Ebb, the, the last songwriting teams, don't you think? Of the like tra well, traditional two-man songwriting teams. It's a good point. It's a good point, especially at that time. They were keeping musical theater on its toes in a very new way. Yeah. In a very, very new way. Don't forget, they were the new breed at that time. Right, right. Yeah. You know, and then a decade later, of course, Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice you know, sure. they sprung up, you know. Yeah. But uh, Tony Newley and, and Leslie Brickus were really sort of the forerunners in that, you know. And really, the standards of the 20s and 30s and 40s really came out of predominantly Broadway. That's where the popular music came from at that time. Absolutely. It, it isn't the same Absolutely. way today. Occasionally a song comes out, but pretty much it, it's not from Broadway anymore. Well, you know, you get these shows like Aladdin and the shows mm -hmm. like... The Wiz and shows like Wicked, you're starting to see it again, I think. Yeah. You're starting to see it with Stephen Schwartz, and you're starting to see it, you know, with people like, like, of course, like I mentioned, Andrew Lloyd Webber, and and you're starting to see it with with people like that. I think they're starting to bring it back. You mentioned Anne Hampton Calloway. We've had a chance to chat with her and also her uh, sister a few times uh, on the show. And people don't. Aren't they know lovely gals? They, oh, they're a lot of fun to talk to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great they're talent. great. And I'll tell you, they're really—they're a very gifted family. Oh, they are. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, the, the, they usually come down our way uh, once every year or two, and and to choose one of her songs, uh, that, that's a great honor for for her to have you sing that called "Perfect." And how did, how did you? Well, you know how that out? came about. You yeah, know how that came about. Yeah. Anne Anne had read on Facebook. You know, we friend each other on Facebook, and we Annie and I know each other a long time. You know, I mean, we go back. We were on the same record label. You know, twenty years ago, and. She's just a sweet, sweet girl, very gifted, and I'm really happy for her success. She and Liz, I mean, they they deserve it so, so much, you know. And yeah. and Anne read that I was going to be doing the CD, and I said something on Facebook like, I'm digging out my material, I'm digging it out. So, you know, of course, Anne has my email, so she emailed me back, and uh, you know, on my private email, and she said, I got something for you. So I said, send it. Like two minutes later, two minutes, two minutes. I'm telling you, two minutes later, she she's such a great she's she's a doll. She sent me um, an MP of of perfect. I'm telling you, Doug, I wasn't even halfway through the song, and and I'm listening to this thing, and I was I could hear myself on it. It was yeah. like that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. She sent me the, and her rendition, by the way, was gorgeous. And but I I heard myself doing it a little bit differently, you know. I, I guess everybody's got to put their fingerprint on their work, you know. And and I listened to Anne do it, and I just sort of closed my eyes. She had sent it down on my computer, and I just stopped. I was halfway through it, and I called Herb Bernstein, you know Herb, my conductor. Right. And I and I called Herbie, and I said, Herbie, I think I found a great song. He said, Where? I said, Anne Hampton Calloway just sent me this great song. So I forwarded the attachment to Herbie. So Herbie's now listening to the <laughs> song. Herbie gets halfway through the song. He didn't get, like me, he didn't even get, he like, oh. and he called me up and he said, you've got to do this song. <laughs> so I emailed Anne back. It must have been like 20 minutes after she sent it to me. And I said to her, send me the lead sheet. Herbie wants to pick a key. She was so excited. I, we made this decision to do this song in like 20 minutes. Wow, that's great. Yeah. That's how fast it. See, it's a funny thing when you when you know it's right. Like a lot sure. of people always say to me, how, "How do you pick material, Julie?" How, you know, it's an organic thing. It's not a conscious thing. If it is, I'm not aware of it. It's a really organic thing. You hear it. And you either hear yourself on it or you don't. It either really resonates, you know, really deep inside of you or you don't. And, like, halfway through the song, I knew I was going to do this. Well, then Annie, uh, she, Anne Hampton Calloway uh, emailed me back. She, she's adorable. And she, she emailed me <laughs> back. And she went, yes, yes, I'm going to send you the sheet music in five minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> so I got the sheet music 20 minutes after she sent me the MP. Um, we called the studio, and it was one of the first things we recorded. Wow! You don't you talk about the arrangements on it, and and you mentioned Herb uh, doing the arrangements. You, you got some really unique ones on this CD. I know you always have great arrangements, but that's really important to a song too, isn't it? Kind of coming up with a different arrangement on them, isn't it? You know, he's a gifted man, isn't he, Doug? Herb yeah. Bernstein is a really gifted man. And I'll tell you who brought a lot to the CD as well was Jamie Lawrence. We went into his mm-hmm. studio here in New York. And I don't know whether you know about that family. You know, Elliot Lawrence, his father, was a very, very, is, is, is a very famous uh, orchestra leader and orchestra oh, sure. leader yeah. and arranger. And he always did the Tony Awards in New York and the Oscars and this and that and the other thing. And talk about another gifted family. I mean, between Jamie Lawrence, between Herb Bernstein, between Anne Hampton Calloway, Anthony Newley, Steve Dorff, you know, all these <laughs> other writers that I have on the CD, Charles Smalls. Paul Anka wrote the English lyric and, and rewrote Let Me Try Again with Sammy Kahn for, right. for Let Me Try Again. That's not too bad either. So... um Originally, the song was it was it was written by you know the French composer, um, but I didn't do it in French. I did it in English, so I did the Paul Anka Sammy Kahn version, right? Of Let Me Try Again, the one that Frank did. It's the same version that he did. Yeah, I didn't realize it was a French tune at first until I saw your CD. So I learned something there. Yeah, really? yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's it was it was originally uh, a um, written Laissez in French. Laissez-moi le temps. Oh, you pronounced that right? Yeah. 
<laughs> yep, yep. That's the way all the Brooklyn people say it. I'm That's telling right. you. <laughs> it's the way all us Brooklyn girls, Brooklyn. we walk around oh, saying that all the time. I was saying, there's something about Brooklyn. I was born there. My parents uh, pretty much grew up there. There's something about Where Brooklyn were you that, born in Brooklyn? Uh, Where were you born in Brooklyn? Uh, you know, my mother told me the hospital. I didn't live there. I was born there. I lived on Long Island, but 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 it was. Uh, I, I can't tell you the hospital now. I forget. But uh, but but Brooklyn. How do you forget family. Brooklyn, Doug? <laughs> my dad did, and my mother for most of her life did. So it's it's a part of our lives. <laughs> well, you know, Brooklyn is becoming the new yuppie, cool area, and you know, there's an area in Brooklyn right now where there are a lot of. Really, really, you know, in the Dumbo and Williamsburg area, there are a lot of people that are in the film business, and they right. do a lot of independent film. Yep, a lot of independent films are coming out of Brooklyn. A lot of really, really grand artists, uh, writers, and creative people are 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 in Brooklyn now. It's become a real hotbed for young, new, very hip people with a whole other point of view about film. You know. Yeah, you have that, and you have the sports arena there. So you got hockey coming. Yeah. It's 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 back to almost what what it was. I think uh, back in the heyday, that was the place. A lot of great talent came out of. And uh, again, it's, it's it's it's. I'm glad to hear that because Brooklyn for a while kind of got a bad rap, but uh, but it's a great place. Something's in the water and the egg creams. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Something's in the water and the egg creams in Brooklyn. Not to mention the bagels. It's a great place. If you're hungry, go to Brooklyn. There's a lot of good That's food great. there. You'll never starve in but I re- <laughs> But I'm so thrilled, Doug, uh, that you love the CD. We've been getting such great feedback on it. You know, it, it, it's a funny thing about, and you know this is true, because, you know, you've been in the business a long time. You know how it works. And, you, you know, when you, when you are creating uh, pieces, whether it be a film or a book or a musical piece or whatever you're doing, a show... You know, you live with it for such a long time, and you right. never really know. I mean, in your heart of hearts, you, you know, you put yourself in it, and you believe at the time that you're doing everything that you could do to deliver the best of yourself. But you never really know how it's going to be received until you're brave enough to put it out. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. Yeah. And, 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 when you, and when you put it out, and, and people are loving it, you know, it's, the, it's so rewarding. You just... You feel on top of the world, and the CD's only been out less than two weeks, and we have been getting such incredible feedback. I, you know, I, I'm just over the moon over this. I really, really am, and I hope that everybody who's listening, if they go to Amazon or CD Baby or iTunes, and even if they want to just download one song, whatever it is, I, I feel so proud of the work, and I just hope they're going to love it as much as we love doing it, you know? They wrote the songs as the title. I just want to give the full title of it, Julie Budd. Uh, they wrote the songs. And you mentioned, Julie, I know the music industry has changed a lot, particularly with the recorded music. But uh, I think, like you said, people now are, are, are buying individual songs or, or going online to get them. So uh, I, I guess it's coming back. But, uh, but that's good news that the CD's already uh, taken off. It's taking off like crazy. And you know what I noticed? Um, and, and I just saw this with Barry Manilow's career. He's such a, a darling man. I don't know Another if you've ever chatted. With... Oh, yeah, and and he's such, <laughs> this man is gold. He's just the sweetest man on the planet, not to mention his gifts. And he's so gifted. But he just put out a CD. And, you know, he, of course, put it online because so many of, 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 of the people are buying CDs online. Right. His audience, similarly to mine, his audience... Uh, was not as much of the downloads as they were requesting the hard copy CD. Mm. A a great many, in fact, I think they just said that Barry Manilow just set the record for the most hard copy CDs ever bought online. Is that right? Wow. Something like, yeah, something like over a million CDs. I mean, some crazy number like that. And you know how most people download online. And most of his people were buying hard copy. I notice a great many of my people are downloading as well. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a decade younger or, or more. But, but still, the people who are in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, very, very often they want a hard copy. 
Right. And um, and I noticed that a, a great portion of of my um, audience is buying the entire CD as a regular CD, you know, not downloading. Mm-hmm. Which what? is sort of interesting because it's similar it to what happened with Barry Manilow. Kind of going you back. Know, so we must whoever. have. Yeah, going back to the old school way of buying the whole record. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <were> and <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But I think a lot of people that like Barry's music and I think a lot of people that like my music, a lot of people that like Michael Feinstein and folks like that. Um sure. you know, they're not they're not little kids. They're, you know, people who are a little bit more seasoned in their taste in music. And so, um I think that their mentality is they want an album. They want a CD. They want they want to feel the product in their hand. They want to read the liner notes. They want to look at the artwork. They really want a piece of product in their hand. And then they always have the option of downloading it once they have it anywhere that they want. You know what I'm saying? Right. But but they want it. And it was interesting to see that Barry Manilow's hit that he has right now was comprised of more hard copy than download. That's interesting. Yeah, good good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. I and say, I'm, I'm sort of seeing that with my folks, too. i got to say the pictures are, are great on the CD. Two wonderful photographs on the front and back cover. And uh, you're looking great, Julie. Things are, things are well, looking good. Well, thanks. You feel, you feel good. <laughs> I feel great, Doug. I'm so... I'm so happy that when you heard it, you really loved it. I mean, I it just moves me. This type of music and and your renditions of it, and uh, we we got to get you down to Florida though. That's the thing in our part of Florida. Yes, <laughs> next you winter do. you got to come down. Come... Believe me, if I come down there in the winter, you know I'm never leaving. <laughs> we had the most miserable the winter here in New York. You know, if I come down to Florida, place. but not in the winter time. You got to come down. <laughs> I'll put a cot in the studio and you'll keep me there. there hey, by go. the way, which song which song have you been playing for the for the people on my C D? Which one have you enjoyed to to play for the folks? Well definitely the, the newly and Brickus medley, because that's uh, yeah. those are great standards that people enjoy. Uh, also uh the Love Me Do, because that's a, a great rendition of uh, a song that uh, people may not be aware of but can, you know, in, in that kind of uh, arrangement that you did. It's a great, like you said, jazzy arrangement of that. So that's getting a lot of great uh, Great response. Beatles song. Yeah. Paul McCartney and John Lennon, Love Me Do. I just, yeah. it just, it just takes you back to a very happy time, you know? And of course, Let Me Try Again, the Frank Sinatra standard there. We play a lot of Frank on the station, so uh, that, that one as well. Oh, I'm so glad that you're liking it. I really, really am. You're such a, a great pal to, to help me get the word out there with this CD. You don't have well, any idea to, how much I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad we could work it out. Uh, I know we haven't chatted in a while, but uh, I'm glad uh, that the CD is coming out now. And uh, and Julie Budd, they wrote the songs in the name of it. Julie, I know you're doing some gigs around the New York area, right? Yeah, I'm. I'm first of all, on Monday, you're going to love this. On Monday, I'm going to Barnes & Noble on East 86 and Lex at 7 p.m., I'm bringing my entire band into the store, and we're going to uh, do a CD kickoff event, and we're going to be singing songs from the CD, doing questions and answers with the audience, signing the CDs, and I'll do a little mini concert in the middle of the store, which is kind of cool. And yeah. then on May, 8, on May 15th, I open at the Metropolitan Room here in New York, and I run until May 18th. And then on May 30th and 31st, I'm at the Raz Room in New Hope. And June 11th through June 15th, I'm at the Surf Light Theater in New Jersey doing a Richard Rogers Oscar Hammerstein retrospect, and it's called Some Enchanted Evening. I have eight performances. And then I'll be at Dix Hills Performing Arts Center in Long <laughs> Island. So, I mean, it's it's all on the website, but, but I'm busy, busy. And, and if people want to chat with me, you know, folks on your show and stuff like that, they can go to Facebook and they can talk with me on Facebook. Great. I know we, we also podcast this interview, so it's up online and people around the country can hear it. So that's why I want to give you a chance to plug some of your gigs because uh, people listen online as well. But, uh, Julia, oh, yeah. It's, uh, oh, yeah. Pleasure to talk to you. I know we kept you on longer than we said, but it's always fun just to talk. We could talk for hours, but I, but I know you have to, you have, I to know. You have to get some rest for your shows. 
<laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm sending you an enormous thank you and a huge hug for helping me with my with my new project. They wrote the songs, and and I hope that when people are hearing it on your on your show, they're gonna love it. They will. Julie, great talking with you. We'll we'll do it. Uh, they won't wait three more years. We'll do it again real soon, and uh, look forward to seeing you sometime. Mm-hmm. 